Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from one of our special guests. Amen. Come on, let's give God a big, big clap and thank Him for everything He's doing, everything He's going to do. Amen. Oh, it's good. Come on, why don't you even just lift your hands just where where you're standing, you know. I just know that there there are people here who need a miracle. God, we know that your hand is not too short to do what's required. You can make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, we just pray right now for those who need a financial miracle, maybe to sell a house or purchase land. Maybe there's a broken heart that needs to be healed tonight. You can make a way. Maybe there's somebody who's sick, has got cancer, has had a bad report. Lord, we lift our hands to you because we surrender. We know that by your stripes we are healed. And you can heal us body, soul, spirit. Something can shift in our life today. As we make a space for you, when we make room for you, you'll fill it. And God, we honor you and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Come on, give God a big clap as you take your seat. Amen. Have a seat. Well, let me just share this little thought with you. Um, Psalm 116, it was one of the very first passages that God gave me when I was very sick. It said, I love the Lord, verse 1, I love the Lord and He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because He has turned His ear to me, I will call on Him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me and the anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. And then I call on the name of the Lord, O save me. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. And, you know, at the age of 13, as I said, I'm the youngest of eight in my family. Um, It's very cold in New Zealand. And uh, I think that's why mum and dad had so many children. Uh, (laughs) At the age of... uh, Well, I was brought up in a Catholic background. I don't know if you know much about that. But in in Catholic church, I wouldn't be like this church at all. You know, like I saw people like talking in the sanctuary and doing things like that. Like in in, in our church, you would walk in, you'd have to be very quiet because God was there. And so he would be nervous about noise or things like that. And and that was the way. And, And we kind of didn't think that God would even bother with us. Like the guy in the dress would get the download and then he would talk to everybody else about that. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? That's, that's the way that it kind of went with us. Um, at the age of 13, I was diagnosed with leukemia. We were on family holiday and I started collapsing. And um, I was rushed to a hospital. Um, my life was in danger whether I was going to live or not because leukemia is a little bit like having AIDS. It takes over your body. A lot of people don't, first of all, die of leukemia. They die of like a common cold or something else that would double on top of that and um, that was that was what was happening to me so uh, they rushed me to hospital and they started massive doses of radiotherapy chemotherapy back in a day um, the types of leukemia was really different and we can you know the we can't compare apples to apples for the treatment that they have now um, I was in an isolation unit. Uh, in the old days, it put you in a bubble, like a very sterile kind of oxygen bubble. But I was where they used to keep babies, and um, and there was a soundproof room. And I started to lose my hair really quickly. And I remember this one day getting really upset with God. And uh, <laughs> and I, I remember saying, God, I hate you. What have you done? And you're killing me. And um, all I've done is swear a couple of times and steal 50 cents. And, and um, you know, I'm not a bad kid. And this is what you're doing to me. And I was really upset with him. And I was just yelling as this 13-year-old boy. And then I remembered in my Sunday school days a little song about a God who would open blind eyes and deaf people would hear. And I lifted my hands in that little room. And I said, God, if you created the heavens and the earth, and if blind people can see and deaf people can hear then you can really heal me. And I said, God, I won't drink like my brothers drink and I won't sleep around like they do. 
God, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Has anybody ever blamed God for their circumstance? When, when divorce hits, when we didn't get the right sale for the house, if the parking space wasn't there. Sometimes God can get all sorts of blame for things that we can do. And I think sometimes God's shoulders are big enough to handle that. But it's not necessarily a great place to live. I remember lifting my hands and saying, trying to bargain with God or manipulate or twist his hand and say, God, I'll be a good boy if you look after me. In New Zealand, it's very cold, can get to minus 10 degrees frost where we were brought up. And um, I remember uh, at night time, I don't even know if you know what an electric blanket is. You do? <laughs> well, when, it was like, when there was a frost, my mum would turn it on three, which is the highest. And after you play cricket with your friends, and supper, you'd hop in your jam jams, your pajamas, and you'd slide into those sheets. And it's an amazing feeling of, ah. As you snug in, you know what I'm talking about? When I prayed that prayer, I felt this incredible warmth fall all over me. I knew God had done something, but I didn't know what it was. I was Catholic. I knew that something had happened in my life, but I couldn't put it into words, I couldn't describe it, I just knew that something had happened. I remember um, six weeks later I was in remission, which is really quick for the type of leukemia that I had. Um, and, my, and I was an inpatient, outpatient at school. Who knows, when you're the, naughtiest, when you're the sickest kid in school, you can get away with anything, <laughs> right? And I was the sickest. Nobody knew what to do with me because I had leukemia. And so my friend and my brothers, who were pretty out of control, uh, were introducing me to drugs and to alcohol. At the age of 15, I was smoking drugs with two of my school teachers, um, uh, which you know, wasn't the, the greatest. And I would skip all of school, or does that translate? Wag school. Um, and then, but there was one class I never missed, and that was geography. And that was because I was sitting beside the most drop-dead beautiful blonde you've ever seen. Janine, if you're watching, it excludes you. <laughs> and, um, and I'd say to her, how about you and me, you know, we should hook up. And she'd say, get lost, you know. And I'd say, come on, I'd, p I'd p persist. And she'd say, no, no, no. And um, she'd go home and tell her mum. She said, you know, my grades are going down. She was like the ducks of the school because I'm sitting beside the naughtiest kid, you know. And, and, she, and her mum said, ask him to youth group. And she said, no, he, he, he can't. He, he's unsavable. He's not going to. He's not going to get in. <laughs> so week after week, I was trying to get a date with this girl. And she was like, no, no, no. And there's one day, I remember like yesterday, she said to me, I want to talk to you about something after class. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is it. <laughs> and, um, and we were meeting at the bike sheds, and everybody knew, if you met at the bike sheds, you were going to get a kiss. And so this would have been my first kiss. And so I was pumped. Remember when those mouth sprays came out? <laughs> I went through a whole can after school in preparation of the moment. It was a windy day. And I don't know if you've seen Legally Blonde or not the movie, but when she was waving her hand here, she dropped her school books like that, and she bent down and she snapped me. Well, she, she had me at hello. I, I don't care what she's going to ask me to do. She said, listen, she said, um, I'm wondering if you want to come to youth group with me on Sunday night. And I said, what's youth group? She said, well, it's where we get together and talk about stuff, about God and that. And I said, yeah, sure, I'm into it. And uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking she's asking me on a date. I had mum and dad's sports car. I picked her up, opened the car door for it, shut it. Nice, the girls love that stuff. And um, I couldn't believe it. It was a small youth group, like 30 people in somebody's house. And there were three more attractive girls in this youth group. Brilliant. And they were so nice to me, so attentive, so caring, lots of hugs. I thought, man, this is awesome. And um, six weeks into it, the pastor says to me, do you want to become a Christian? I said, mate, I already am. I'm, I'm Catholic. You know, like, if we're not in, who is? And uh, he said this. He said, just because you go to McDonald's every day doesn't make you a hamburger. And just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. I completely disagreed with that theology. I was like, what? He said, have you ever sinned? I was like, well, no. Oh, really? 
none of the big ones. He said, um, what, what, what about the Ten Commandments? How would you go with the Ten Commandments? Thinking to myself, I'd score in the high nines, maybe an eight. I'd, maybe an eight. He said, let's go through some of them quick. I said, okay. He said, have you ever told any lies? I said, sure, sure. <laughs> White ones, but they don't count. Like, you know, who knows in America if you cross your fingers while you tell lies, they don't count either, right? Right? And he said, well, you know, how many white ones before a real one? I said, well, I suppose just one. <laughs> he said, so what are you then? I said, oh, I, don't, I don't get what you mean. He said, if you tell lies, what are you? I said, a liar? He goes, that's right, you're a liar. I said, that's not very nice. <laughs> I thought you Christians are supposed to be nice. You go around telling me I'm a liar. He said, have you ever stolen anything? I'm trying to help him out now. I said, sure, I'm a stealer, right? And he goes, no, you're a thief. I said, what is this, a, an English lesson? He said, Andrew, have you ever committed adultery? I said, mate, that's it. I'm 15. <laughs> Committing adultery is having sex with a married person. Gross. He says to me this. He says, Andrew, the Bible says if you look lustfully at a woman, you commit adultery in your heart. I said, have you, have you done that? I said, sure. Her and her and her and her and her and her. <laughs> Basically, the whole youth group. <laughs> of the female side of the holy group. He said, you're holy, God's not, sin separates us from God, and you can pray a prayer asking Christ to come into your life. Now, I've got to tell you the truth. All of my life I believed in God. I just didn't know how to have a relationship with Him. I'm amazed how 30-second moments in the presence of God can change your whole world. Like one prayer, I mean, you'd think God would make it harder. Like maybe uh, you have to give a million dollars or pray a thousand hours to get into heaven. But he goes, no, that starts a prayer. I seen Christ come into your life saying sorry for any wrongs. That prayer changed my life. Um, six months after that, the leukemia comes back. <laughs> I thought when you become a Christian, everything would go your way. Like the moon would be moonier, the sun would be sunnier, girls would just fall at your feet or something. <laughs> it would just go your way. I didn't think that you'd get sick again. It was a big shock to me. And this time I was a lot more aggressive, a lot more um, uh, harder to treat. And the stats went dramatically down because when you go to remission, then things are bad. And uh, they gave me a new treatment where they put the leukemia... The, the chemotherapy in my head uh, and they, uh, they gave me, had a brain surgery and put a tube uh, that goes into my uh, spinal fluid and uh, when they did that um, I had no neutrophils and I had meningitis uh, and I just had brain surgery and I've got leukemia and things were looking very grim and the doctors told us that uh, my percentages were like uh, like 1% chance of living and so my Catholic priest came and gave me my last rites. <laughs> he knows that's just a bad day. I mean, that's just a flat out bad day. <laughs> we do get, you know, and they get the little incense out. And I really thought I was going to die. Where was the miracle for me? It was my youth pastors came and they said, we believe in a different report. I wonder if the worship team could come and join me. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing when you've been told that you're really sick and it's going to be like that. I mean, I've been fighting for about three years since then. You know, if I'm honest, I didn't believe my youth pastors. <laughs> if I'm honest, when I think about my situation, I probably believe my doctors. Probably believed what my family was saying. I probably believed what my Catholic priest was saying. I thought I was going to die. I could have said to my youth pastors, don't get my hope up. Don't be mean to me. Why are you being mean to me? Don't tease me saying that God's going to wave his magic wand and everything's going to be better now. And So where was the miracle? I think the miracle was in my stretch. Even in my unbelief, allowing them to pray for me. You say, well, Andrew, I haven't got much faith today. Somebody's prayed for me before, or 
some other time or something else has happened and you're sitting there and thinking, I'm not sure if it would work that if I got prayer tonight. The Bible says all you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. And I think the very fact you're in church is enough for God to do what he needs to do. The very fact that you'd open your heart again to God is enough. And I think your pastors are awesome. That they would allow a space, room for your miracle. That something could shift for you. The greatest day for as far as my health was the day that they prayed for me. And I remember this excitement coming to me. Within a few weeks I was in remission. All the infections had gone. The doctor said it was remarkable. And I remember thinking to myself, man, this is exciting. My youth pastor said to me, the short story, when I was about 18, they said, because God had healed you, maybe that God would use you in the gift of healing. And, you know, we didn't start out with cancer, literally bleeding noses and headaches. But I began praying with people and God seemed to be showing up and I was encouraged by that. When I was 19 years old, I went to Bible college when I was 20. I started a little youth ministry, took over that youth ministry of 30 people in one year. It became New Zealand's and nation's largest youth ministry. Continued like that for 15 years. Grew our youth conference. We started a youth conference called Get Smart, which still runs now for 15 years. Pastor Paul and Marie Dion have headed that up for the last four years. Done a brilliant job making sure that that runs well. Six years ago, God spoke to me and said, Andrew, I want you to go full-time as a healing evangelist. I've never been more frightened, more excited in all my life. Because really, what we're doing is just creating a moment. Saying, God, we believe. We want you to, to do something. One, th one thing I can, I mean, I, we, I can tell you a thousand healing stories, but my brother was diagnosed to be terminal just a few months ago. Who knows that family a little bit funky? Uh, a little bit harder, you know. You can believe for everybody else, but family can be a little bit trickier. He had prostate cancer and bladder cancer. I walked into the room. I was very doom and gloom and sad. And I said, how are you going? He's like, oh, I'm not going too good. And the short story is that they didn't think he was going to live for very long. His bladder was completely shriveled up. He had to have a, a bag to go to the bathroom. I was praying for him. I was believing God for a miracle for him. And I was just such a great feeling in the room, you know. And he, Halfway through the prayer, he opens his eyes and he says, everything's going to be okay, which kind of really shocked me because he's not a church person. And I said, man, that's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You just need to keep on saying that for the rest of your life. And everything's going to be all right. And I said, I, and I began to prophesy. I said, you know, the, the doctor's going to change the report. They're going to downgrade the, the problem. Everything's going to turn around. This bladder's going to be fully formed. Two days later, they're doing an exploratory operation to find out how long he's got to live. <laughs> I need to find out that they cannot find any cancer in his body anymore. I know. It's good. And not only that, but his bladder, which was not working at all, is now fully formed, fully functioning. And they can't figure that out. People ask me all the time, they say, Andrew, uh, the big question is, how do I get a miracle? Uh, I, think that's, I, think that's a, I think that's an honest question. I haven't figured it out. If I had have figured it all out, I would be writing a book and selling gazillion copies. But I reckon there are three common themes that I, when I talk to healing evangelists, other people who have been doing this a lot longer than me, there would be three themes, uh, like streams that people talk about. And the first one would be, would be, in a practical sense, that you have a relationship with God. I know that God heals people whether they're in church or not, but it just seems to be easier if you're on God's team. The second is the removal of sin. Sin separates us from God. And we all make mistakes. But that's why the Bible says His mercy is new for us every day. So that every day we can just 
keep on giving our sin to God and making sure that we're in right relationship. And the third is that we would change our confession. Our words and our thoughts locate us. The Bible says there's power of life and death in our words and that rabbit hole that we've created is like a self-fulfilling prophecy and you need to sometimes pull ourselves out of that. Haven't we all know friends or family members that say, oh, around this time of the year I always get sick. And we, we look at them, we kind of laugh. But we say little things like that as well. And if we could just change our words, something could shift for you. I say to people after every time we have a healing meeting, and I'll say it probably 10 or 15 times, even just tonight. But I said before we even, after we pray, just for the next 24 hours, 48 hours, why don't you just say to yourself, God, thank you for healing me. Just say that. Because I reckon there's a fight for your soul. The devil doesn't want you to win. It's pretty clear. The Bible says in John 10, 10, he's come to rob, steal, destroy. But God's come that you'd have life and life of the Lord's fullness. Amen? He wants you to win. I love that thought about uh, how Walt Disney created Donald Duck. <laughs> and uh, when Donald was about to do something good or bad, the angel duck appears on one side and the devil on the other. I don't know how Walt Disney did it, but he articulated spiritual warfare perfectly. Because those voices are as real as you can imagine. But I'm telling you, don't let the devil win tonight. Let God do something in your life. And maybe tonight he's, he's had his turn. But I really believe him for a miracle for you, for your family. And so we're going to pray. We're going to ask people whether they want to make a decision for Christ. Because I reckon there are numerous people who are here teetering on that moment. Say, so, you know what, I need to give Christ my life. And after that, we're going to pray for people. I want to explain exactly what's going to do so you don't feel alone or embarrassed or tricked, manipulated. Because I reckon that some people think the, the, the guy at the front's got an agenda. That's not true. The only reason that I'm here is because somebody prayed for me. Felt called of God to share my story with people, pray for people, believe God for a miracle for them. Amen. And so in a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. When you close your eyes, everything else disappears, but your soul and your thoughts are illuminated. And I want you to ask this question to your soul. Am I in relationship with God? I reckon that's an honest prayer. That's, a, that's, a, that's an honest prayer. And you know what? I believe that God will talk to you. But don't be surprised that another voice doesn't pop up and say, hey, listen, don't do it. But if the devil does that, you just tell him, no, mm -mm, not tonight. Tonight's about me, my life, my family. Something's going to shift for me. And let a miracle take place in your life. Give God this window. As you're pondering that thought, I'm going to pray for you. At the end of the prayer, I'm going to list up, ask you to lift up your hand. I'll see your hand. Ask you to put it down. Then all together, we're going to pray a prayer out loud so you don't feel alone or embarrassed. And I'm believing that that prayer is going to touch your life. But I reckon when you lift your hand to God, it's just like, a, just like saying, God, I mean it. I'm here. And I think something exciting is going to happen. Amen. Come on, why don't you just close your eyes? Maybe you need something to shift in your life. Well, as you close your eyes, and for, even for some people, just to do that would be a hard thing, but you can do it. And just pray that prayer. Am I in relationship with God? It's a fair prayer. It's an honest prayer. God will talk to you. God, I thank you for those people who are here for the first time, maybe second time, visiting from another church. And they're saying, Andrew, it's true. I know about God, but if I'm honest, I'm not in relationship with him. I believe there are numerous people here saying, I cannot have another year like 2013. Something has to shift for me. And you know you're out of connection with God. Or maybe you're saying, Andrew, it is sin. A wrong relationship. Maybe a secret sin that nobody else would know about. You're saying, Andrew, that's separating me from that relationship. Or maybe you're saying, Andrew, if I was to face death like you had to when you were a teenager, if I was to walk out of this room and get hit by a car, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know if I'd be in heaven or hell. There'd be a fear and uncertainty around that moment. But would you pray with me so I can have a relationship with God, walk in that relationship, have an assurance of my salvation. Friend, if that's you, you're in one of those categories, come on, big and brave. I just want you to lift up your hand just right now so that, yeah, that's me. 
include me in that prayer. We're going to see your hand. I'm going to put it down. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else is saying? Thank you, thank you at the back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All these hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else is saying? That's me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else is saying? That's me. Something has to turn. Who else? Just lift your hand. I'll see you. Thank you, thank you. Who else? Wonderful. Wonderful. Come on, what are we all? Just why don't you just put your hand on your heart just right now. Pray this prayer out loud. Come on, church. Help me pray this prayer with these people. Dear Lord Jesus, tonight I ask you into my life. I give you my life. I give you total control. Forgive me for any wrongs, for any sin. Because I know you died on a cross to take away the sin of the world. Take away my sin. Today, I'm a child of God, a new creation. I believe that in Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you, God. I thank you for every person that lifted their hand or prayed that prayer for the first time. God, I thank you, Lord, that your word does say that the old is gone and the new has come, that we are like new creations. Lord, I pray that the miraculous would fall on people's lives. In Jesus' name, that something is about to shift in them. And Lord, I pray that they would get connected to church, to the family of God, and they'd be blessed. Them and their families. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 All right. Come on, let's give God a clap. We're going to pray for some sick people. Who reckon that would be kind of fun? No? (laughs) Don't get too serious. All right, so this is is what's going to happen. Um, Just a few rules. Number one, this is not the Andrew Kabbalah show. Because I've tried to pray for people uh, by myself, and it didn't kind of work. So God's going to be involved, and we are too. So when we're praying for somebody, we're all praying. And the only reason you would not do that is because it's not your mum or your dad down the front or you. (laughs) And when it is you, you really want everybody to pray. And I'm going to ask you to just reach out your hands. And if you don't know what to say, just say, God, thank you for healing that person. And um, we're going to pray for people. And, uh, And I might call out a few things and... If you think that's you, just put up your hand. And if you think it might be, but you're not sure, that's what everybody thinks. And it probably is you. So just put up your hand anyway. And, um, and we'll, 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 do, we'll do that. But um, uh, I kind of I like going for a walk. Is that okay? Because I reckon all the naughty people are around, like around the back. And uh, I kind of just going to find somebody. But it's just somebody down this... Uh, down, down, maybe down here, and you're, you're in so much pain, you thought, I'm not even going to come to church, but you thought, I'm going to come anyway. Who's that just close to me? And you're just like, really? What's, no, you know, what's, what's wrong, sir? Really? Well, we're definitely going to pray for you. Who, who else is, is like that? You're just in such pain. Well, what's wrong with you, darling? I can't even hear. Sure. Oh, pacemaker? Yeah, we'll pray for you as well. Who else? Is it something to do with you, like uh, a hip or a back or something? Yeah? Oh, what? Your back. Oh, so I stood right beside you, my friend. Come over here, my brother. You wouldn't probably put your hand up normally, huh? Are you shy? You're not? Kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of. Let's give this guy a hand. He's like, got a welcome. You got a, like a catcher or something? What's your name? Matthew Vidal. Who? Matthew Vidal. Matthew? Oh, Matthew Vidal. Oh, I can't even say that. Matthew Vidal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say um, man of God. All right. So like, now, where's the, where's the source bit? And how did you hurt your back? You can say overworking. Overworking? Working hard. How, how long has it been sore for? A year and three months. A year and three months. Pastor Jim should have asked me earlier. <laughs> that's, a, that's, an, that's, a, that's a, an evangelist joke. <clears throat> All I want you to do is just close your eyes, okay? 
The whole church is going to pray for you. Tell that's your, that's your cue. <laughs> You're going to feel warmth coming to your back. And you may feel like your vertebrae moving a little bit. If it does, like, don't, don't yell at me or anything because I get scared when people start yelling. But, he, but all I want you to do is just close your eyes and say, God, thank you for healing me. In fact, here comes warmth coming to your back right now. Come on, church, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for healing over our friend. The power of God is going to fall. Here comes the power of God right now in Jesus' name. Here comes. Affirmity and sickness is going to shift off his life. In Jesus' name, the miraculous is going to fall. Healing is coming into his back. In Jesus' name. Can you feel that warmth coming into your back? It's called healing. It's called the power of God. Now you don't, need to, don't fall down. You don't need to fall down. We just need to get you healed. Some people fall down too, too soon. Don't let them fall down. Okay? But there's other miracles happening in your life as well. I feel like God's healing your heart. You've had a broken heart, my friend. God's going to heal it today. And that, could be, that could be the bigger miracle. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, the power of God fall on this life in Jesus' name. Healing. Holy Spirit, come. Touch this life. Can you feel your back getting warm? Yeah? Are you doing all right, my friend? You're a good man. Just bend down, touch your toes. You'll find you're in a lot better spot. Oh, that's even better than me. How are you doing? How's your back? <laughs> Why are you crying? Are they happy tears? Do we do a good job? I've got high self-esteem. You tell me the truth. <laughs> really? I like you. We should be friends on Twitter or something. <laughs> right? Come on, give him a big, big clap. <laughs> Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Now, uh, I feel like there's somebody with a really bad hip problem. Who's that? Like, maybe, who's got arthritis in the hip? Who's got arthritis in the hip? Who? Where? Come, come. Where about? Are you in pain? Um, I'm not in pain because I've been. Oh. Drugs for a year? Yeah. Shouldn't take drugs? Hugs. Hugs. Know, Hugs, not drugs. Who else? There's somebody else? But somebody else? Doing drugs, you know. What? Is he shy? Mm. <laughs> He's the shy one. Do you want to come, sir? Do you want to come? Do you want to come? Snuggles, why don't you come? Are you, are you connected with him? Are you connected? Well, you can't put your hand up and not come. Come. You come. Come. Is there somebody else? Huh? Is there somebody else? This is, is this the right church? What's wrong with you, darling? Well, why don't you come? You have to come? Why didn't you put your hand up? Are you shy? What's wrong with you, man? You have to make your girl do it? What's your name? Have you got a hard name as well? I'm not going to ask you anymore. Yeah, Robert. Robert. I like you, Robert. Good on you, mate. What's that other guy? He's still giving me a hard name. Robert and Nancy. Nancy. Give Robert and Nancy a big hand, guys. What's wrong with me? Nancy? You tell me. You got, what shape is that? You, you didn't put your hand up because you didn't think it was going to work, or you're shy? Which one? Why are you laughing at me? Don't laugh at me. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. You believe? Well, you're about to believe something amazing. It's going to happen to you. I honestly believe that tonight. And you're going to feel warmth coming to your hip. My dad had crippling arthritis in his shoulders, arms, soon on. Shut the gate. <laughs> and I just said that. That was kind of cute. I'm getting good at this thing. <laughs> so this would be a big miracle, huh? I don't sleep at night. I can't sit. Well, the whole church wants you to win tonight, don't we, church? All I want you to do is just say, God, thank you for healing me. Not out loud, just, just in your head, a thousand times over. We're going to pray for him, okay? The whole church is praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, 
So the power of God's going to fall on this life and healing's going to come. You're going to feel warmth coming to your shoulders. God, we thank you, Lord, right now. Firmly in sickness, the bind and break its power. Healing's going to come right now in Jesus' name. You're going to make a way. God, you're so good. You're so kind. Lord, you're going to touch this life. Sleep's going to be healed. Rest is going to come into his soul. He comes warmth right now and firmly in sickness. Shift over his life. And Lord, I command that spirit of pain, that arthritis is going to leave. In Jesus' name, devil, get off right now. In Jesus' name, here comes. He comes that warmth come right into your shoulders right now in Jesus' name. I see a black cloud literally shifting off your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God's talking to me about your heart as well. Like, it's like fear of a heart attack. Right now in Jesus' name, the power of God falling on this life. Can you feel that warmth coming to your shoulders? Yes, I can. How amazing is that? You're getting healed tonight. So glad your wife put her hand up. What? <laughs> Imagine if she didn't. Why are you crying? Everybody's crying in this church. You're supposed to be happy. I'm only joking. Remember, God still works with your eyes open, smiling. Don't have to be weird to get healed. I'm just waiting, give him like three more seconds. I, I literally saw a cloud just go whoosh, off your life in Jesus' name. How hot are your shoulders right now? They're pretty warm. Go like that. You'll find them. How are you feeling, though? What? Where's the microphone? I need a microphone. I can't, I can't hear the guy. It was just hot. It, I felt it. My shoulders, my arms. Tell us because they didn't hear that one. I said I <laughs> too close. Okay, too close, too close. Go ahead. I felt the heat in my shoulders and I felt it just wash through my whole body. <laughs> Thank you. Does she need a miracle? Does she need a miracle? Does she need something? Are, are you shy? <laughs> just need, just need. Now, we, now we listen. Both need help with losing weight. Now listen. Okay, I've only got so many miracles. Okay. <laughs> listen, listen. This is serious, though. This is serious. There's a fight because you don't realize because when you've been sick for a long time, the devil always attacks the miraculous, and he says to you, "It's not going to last. It's not going to last. It's not going to work. It's not going to last." But what you experience today is healing. And so you've got to fight for your miracle. You've got to fight for your miracle as well. And that's what I'm saying for the next 24 hours. Come on, what, what have you got to lose? Just say, God, thank you for healing me. Don't let the duck, the wrong duck win. Let the good Donald win. Okay, don't forget about that picture because those voices are real. And, um, and you'll be fine. And you're going to sleep like a baby. You ring up the pastoral staff and just say, you know what? I was hooked up, church. Didn't want, didn't, want to, didn't want to come up. My wife made me. Come on, have a seat, have a seat. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God that I'm saved, 
and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.